Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're going to be creating a tumbler inspired by this beautiful painting here that I saw on Instagram. Now, my first try at this design, I really didn't love it and neither did my friend when I showed it to her and she's like, why don't you try doing the clouds this way? So she sent me a really simple cloud painting tutorial that she found on TikTok and I tried it that way and I actually ended up liking both versions. So I'm gonna show you how I did both in this video and you tell me in the comments which one you liked better, but two very different techniques, two very different looks. I think they're both okay. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to have all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys. So I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup and we are going to apply our gold foil sheets. I'm using Wicked Stick It from Wicked Shimmer Supply. I will have a link for it down below. This is definitely my favorite foil adhesive. And we're gonna apply this adhesive with a fluffy brush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a cute fluffy brush. I like using these fluffy brushes because it helps keep everything nice and smooth. So no lines. And the goal here is to get a thin and even coat with no puddles or lines in the application. The gold foil that I'm using today is technically rose gold foil sheets. I got them on Amazon and I will also link these down below in the description box. We're only gonna do one thin coat on here because it doesn't take a whole lot to adhere these sheets. We know that our adhesive is fully dry once it's clear. And using the carrier sheet that comes between each one of these gold foil sheets, we're going to just very gently place this over the cup. It helps to have your cup on one of these hand turners. This is the Bling Queen 2 from The Bowen on Etsy. I will link their shop in the description box. And you're just gonna gently lay that over and then pat it down with your fingers. Super gentle here. Every time you kinda pull away, you're gonna pull away some of the flake and you wanna try to avoid that. But it's okay if you have some patches and stuff because we could just pick up some of the pieces of the foil sheet that fell down and place those right over the exposed sections. The more pressure that we use to rub these down, the more burnished and shiny this is going to look. So don't worry if this initially looks messy. Once we're done, we're going to rub all over the entire cup to really smooth it out. And it's gonna end up looking like a beautiful gold Easter egg. I love using these foil sheets, especially on curved cups where we couldn't necessarily get a really smooth application with something like a laser foil, which I've used before. And this also adds so much more of an elegant look than the laser foils when we're going for this particular kind of application where we want more of an ethereal gold look rather than like a chrome gold look. Once we're done with that, we're going to take out our paints. I'm using the Arteza Premium Acrylic Set. Here's the colors that I used. I didn't end up using all of these colors though, but you can kind of get an idea for the shades. Now I'm gonna first show you the cloud painting technique that I least liked. <laughs> After I put all the paint on my paper plate here, I'm just going to mix in a little gloss pouring medium. I always like to use gloss pouring medium with my acrylic paints because I just get a lot more bang for my buck and the paint goes on so much smoother. It only takes a couple drops per color and just mix them in. To start on these clouds, I'm going to again take a fluffy brush and just dip that into my white paint to start, tapping off all the excess. And we're going to start to form the shape of a cloud by pouncing the tip of our brush onto the cup and you know, just kind of pouncing around to create a general cloud shape. Next, I took a slightly larger fluffy brush. I got this from my kids' paint brushes <laughs> from Crayola. And I dipped a little bit of the yellowy beige color in with our white, just because I thought it would look better. And again, I'm just kind of pouncing and stippling in more of the cloud shape. I'm doing this all the way around the cup. 
Next, I'm mixing in a little bit of that white paint with some of the lightest pink color here to get the right shade that I want. And I'm gonna swirl in some detail into those clouds with my brush. You can see here I'm just making really simple swirly shapes to kind of define some depth and layer to our clouds. To kind of blend things, I started finger painting. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know I'm a fan of finger painting, especially with acrylics. And that really kind of helped me though get that kind of fluffy, round, bubbly shape to my clouds. Going back in with that smaller brush and a little darker pink color, I started adding more kind of fluffy dimension and detail to my clouds. How many times in this tutorial am I gonna say clouds? Oh my goodness. I tried really hard to blend too with that kind of darker color. Lastly, I went in with that larger brush and just some white paint to define the ridges and bumps on those clouds. This is the point where I decided I didn't really like this look. Maybe you like it, I don't know. I just not really a fan. I just didn't like how it turned out. I think if this was not the first time I tried painting these, I would have liked it better, but I really didn't know what I was doing and I just kind of winged it. But here's what I ended up with with that technique. Next, I'm gonna show you the easier, softer way. <laughs> So I've got some of the same shades of pink. I took magenta light, a little darker than magenta color, that lighter pink color, and then of course just white. Again, adding uh, the gloss pouring medium to all my colors. A couple drops in each color is fine. We're gonna take the corner of that flat paintbrush and get just a little bit of paint on the corner there. And then we're gonna paint some W's. So think of a W shape fluffy W's, almost in a round curly Q shape. And as soon as we get that painted onto the cup, we're gonna take a big fluffy brush and we're going to go in big round circles to blend out those W's. I started to use the fluffy makeup brush instead, which I actually liked better. So if I could go back in time, I would have never used the flat brush. I would have just went in with a fluffy makeup brush after painting in my W's. And we're gonna do that all the way around the cup with our darkest colors first. This technique is so much easier than the first one. I got it done in a fraction of the time because you can see you can just cover so much more area so much quicker. So here we are just blending out our W's with that fluffy brush. The more we blend, the less defined our W's are going to be. I did that all the way around the cup to establish our cloud line. I even did it on the very bottom of the cup. Next, we're gonna go in with a lighter color pink. On the first tutorial, this was the lightest color pink that we had used in our palette. This time I'm not gonna water it down with any of the white. We're just gonna go straight in adding smaller amounts of W's as we did with the first darkest color. This is gonna add so much depth and highlight and dimension. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. Just be aware, less is kind of more with this technique because the more you do it, the more muddled our clouds are gonna look and the less you're gonna see that beautiful gold foil shine through. You'll notice I almost have like a V cut section on one side of our tumbler where I'm leaving the gold foil exposed so we can see that beautiful shiny gold. I let the pink layers dry for a few minutes and now I'm starting in with the white. So again, just dipping the corner of our brush into that white paint, we're gonna paint in our fluffy W's all around, smaller sections at a time. And then we'll go in with our fluffy makeup brush and kind of blend those out. The longer you let your W sit, the harder they're gonna be to blend out and the more defined they're gonna be. Sometimes you want a little more definition with those white highlights. Along the edge of our cloud line with the white, I'm doing M shapes now. The M shapes are what's gonna give us that really cloudy, fluffy look and really tell the story of what this painting is. And you'll see when I'm going over with that makeup brush, I'm making little round circles. 
I'm sorry that all you see in this tutorial is my hand getting in the way of the camera shot, but hey, it is what it is. Just continued on with that around the cup. I didn't do white all over because again, I do want some of those darker colors to shine through. In certain sections, I did create some more defined M's to really add some highlight and dimension to our cloud. Once I was done with my painting, I let that dry for a while. And then I got some more of that Wicked Stick It adhesive and a little doe foot applicator. And I'm just gently painting that amongst the clouds in some areas in the same angle that the clouds are moving in, I guess. Uh, just kind of put it here and there. What I'm trying to do here is I wanted to add some more gold foil where I had just ended up covering everything up. So as soon as that adhesive is dry, I'm going to place some more of those foil sheets over the little sections that I just applied the adhesive to. And then you'll just brush off the excess with your flat brush here. And it adds such a gorgeous detail. Now, it's almost impossible to not paint in all of these sections with that painting technique, which is why I'm re-adding in the gold foil. When we're done, we should have something that looks like this. And now we are ready for our first coat of epoxy. You don't have to seal your paint or do anything like that. We could just epoxy right over this. I am using my Flynn Sisters Supply Shop Fast Curing Epoxy for this step. And I'm gonna sprinkle in some glitter into my wet epoxy. This is, I think, unicorn something. I don't know. I'm going to link it down below in the description box. It's just a really beautiful, chunky opal mix. And I'm going to sprinkle that throughout the clouds. I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and a half to two hours before we move on to the next step. Now that my cup is fully dry, I'm going to do my normal sanding routine. We're just going to sand along this top rim to expose a fine line of stainless steel. This is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. Once I'm done with my sanding, I'm going to clean this up with some rubbing alcohol and paper towels. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. I've cut some four point stars and a crescent moon with some pink permanent vinyl using my Cricut. I will link the files that I use for this down below. And I'm just gonna place these randomly on my cup by hand placing them, putting the stars throughout the clouds and then the crescent moon up here in our gold section. Once I was done placing my vinyl, we're gonna move on to our final coats of epoxy. I ended up having to do two final coats of epoxy on this one before it was fully smooth. I did use my Flint Sisters Supply Shop Artist Cure formula for this so we can keep our project beautiful and bright for a very long time. Once our cup was totally smooth and fully done, we're gonna be ready to move on to the last and final step. I thought it would be really fun to add some rhinestones to this design. So I have my e-file nail drill here. I use these just for cups. I don't use these on my nails. And using the point tip drill bit, I am just going to drill a tiny little circle inside each one of these stars. What we want to do is to create a mechanical bond for our rhinestones to adhere to. If we didn't do this, the rhinestones could just pop right off of that beautiful glossy surface. So just really gently go in and put a nice little sanded dot there. And then we're gonna use our 18 gauge syringe to put a small dot of liquid fusion adhesive and place a tiny little rhinestone. I'm using opal luminous pink rhinestones from Flint Sisters Supply Shop. And I would say any size between an SS6 to an SS12 would be perfect for this project. Your stones shouldn't be slipping around. If you find that they are, you may have added a little bit too much glue. If that's the case, just go ahead and wipe everything off really quick with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and try again. That glue dot should just be teensy tiny, just enough to adhere that stone. And then I let this dry overnight before I messed with it. You wanna let it dry probably at least 24 hours before you wash the cup 
and get it ready. Uh, and you should also let your epoxy tumbler sit for 72 hours for a full cure before sending them out to a customer. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this design. Let me know which one you liked better the fluffy clouds or the more defined clouds. I didn't finish the defined cloud ones, the one I didn't like, uh, because it's sitting in timeout in my shop right now. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching my video. If you haven't already, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.